as Dr. Stephen Smith uh, at uh, Collin College in uh, Frisco, Texas. The uh, date is, well, for a few more minutes anyway, uh, August, or excuse me, October 15th. Uh, it is about 11.30 in the evening. Um, and I'm going, the purpose of this video is to demonstrate <clears throat> the uh, first form the insert player form that we have done. I have gotten it, gotten a working version of it up that you may modify, <coughs> excuse me, and take from there. Uh, first thing I'm gonna demonstrate here, I'm gonna start uh, Visual Studio. Now, in the last page, you downloaded a um, zip file. You unloaded, you unzipped the file, and there was one form, and well, there was one folder in there, and you saved that folder uh, someplace on your computer. So I'm going to say file, and I'll open project or solution, and now I will navigate to that where you saved that <laughs> unzipped folder, and <clears throat> this this is where I saved it, I put all my stuff in one place. Um, so someplace on some folder that you have where you, you have saved that form and unzipped it there. <clears throat> so if I were to look at uh, all files, I'd see, I'd see the zip files in here too. If I open that folder, I find here I have my form one SLN, and that is the Visual Studio solution file. Okay, so I opened that guy <clears throat> and could have just gone there and double clicked him and it would have opened here. Okay, let's take a look at the design of it. There is, there are, as I suggested that there would be, there are three text boxes, one execute button, and one label into which I will write the output, what happened. Okay. Um, the only thing that has to hap be happening here, well, the, your database server has to be running. You don't have to have your server management studio running, but you might find it to be useful if you did. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and execute this. I will debug, start without debugging. And if I were <clears throat> running this, this would be all that the user would get. Um, Well, it would run inside of a, of your uh, browser window, your uh, old Firefox or Chrome or whatever you were using to uh, uh, to access it. But this will be on a web server someplace, and this is all you get. So you'd enter the player ID. The player ID is um, cute bunny. Player's name is Josh Joe. And the password is whatever. When I hit the insert player, it tells me that the message is cute bunny was inserted successfully. And if I go over to my um my database and I go to the tables in RPS and I go to the players table and I say edit top 200 rows, show them to me. And I find that cute bunny <clears throat> is there because it was just inserted and there's some other stuff in there that I was uh, testing. But uh, if I inserted <clears throat> a player here, they will be inserted into this table. If I have a null player ID, I get insert fail because player ID is null. If I have a null player name, fail because the player's name is null. And similarly, if I <clears throat> have the password null, Insert failed because the password is null. And this is coming back from the server. I'm going to talk more about what I can do here at the form level. But when I finally get them all filled out and um, um, are 
unique. Let's see what's one. H is, for example, uh, okay, uh, CQXD. <clears throat> if I try to insert the player ID C, don't know where I got that name. Just hitting random keys. His name is Sam. Password is whatever it is. I, the insert failed because CQXD is already in use. Now that one came, all of these messages are things that are coming back from the server. They're coming back as a one, two, three, four. Uh, okay, so let's go look at how that happens. Let's go take a peek at the, um, uh, okay, here we are. If we look at this and the main thing I want to see here is, Okay, the player ID, for example, I'm interested in the name of the player ID. So the name of the player ID is txt underscore PID. Naming conventions apply. Um, no spaces in naming conventions. Look at the player name, player name. The name of player name, what I'm saying there is txt underscore P name. If you don't keep these names straight, it will turn into a nightmare because you will have so many names floating around. And um, this one is txtpwd. So I always underscore them, I always prepend them with txt because they are text fields. I'm not too concerned with the names of these labels up here. Um, that, that's fine. That's fine if it's left labeled too. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, the the ones that matter, the ones that I'm using, insert player, for example, is going to be a very important one. It's BTN insert player, BTN insert player. And then the other one is my output field, that is a label, and its name is LBL underscore output. So those are names that I'm going to need to remember when I get, or be able to come back over here and find them quickly. Now let's go to the Visual Basic Design. Excuse me, the, the code, Visual Basic Code. Okay, I'm going to start here and I'm going to go through it. It's not really that long. I, I know it's 150 lines, but most of them, most of them when you get right down to it are comments. Okay, um, this is the form, <clears throat> this, this is our solution. And our solution uh, imports something from system data SQL client. If you don't include this, you're not gonna get any place with it, it won't compile. So this is the thing that allows us to talk to an SQL server. And I'll, I'll point some things out that we're doing that come from that. This is the form, form one, so everything in here is part of that form. And the first subroutine, that's about the only one I've got, is Button insert player click. When it clicks, when you click the button insert player, what do what happens? And so this is the there's the triggering event. Button insert player dot click. Okay, um, I put some stuff in here. A well written form. Read this. A well written form checks all of the data it can. So everything I can check before I send it across to the um, procedure, I should check it. But then if I'm checking it real well, it's real hard for me to test the procedure. So I'm gonna put in some error checking later into the form. So the form is really our first level of defense. Um, lots of things I can do at the form level. For example, I can uh, declare the winner of the game at the form level. I don't need the database to tell you who won the game. Um, so we will give them meaningful messages, but we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Okay. The first piece is the connection string. Now, this is a point of vulnerability, I agree. The user does not get <clears throat> this code. The end user cannot see this code. But if they are able to get out of their uh, little sandbox there, they can probably get to it. So we would prefer not to have the user ID and password here, 
but until we can do it a little bit better, it's going to have to stay here. <clears throat> this is just a real simple little form. So I'm going to put the user ID and password into this um, connect string. When you want, if you want to break a string, you have to use the underscore character here in, in Visual Basic. So this, uh, this is the continuation character that says this is continues on the next line. And then the plus um, concatenates the strings. So this is all one string. It tells you the data source. The data source is localhost express, SQL express. Where is it on this computer? Uh, the, the initial catalog is RPS, and let's see, RPS underscore DB. Yours has to be RPS underscore DB. If yours isn't RPS underscore DB on the database, change it here. It's easier than trying to change the database at this point. So make your changes here. Uh, your user ID, my user is public underscore user. And my public underscore user's password is p at dollar sign dollar sign w zero r d password. Um, by the way, that's fairly well known. Okay, if yours isn't, then put your use your public user's password in there. <coughs> the public user has the <coughs> ability to execute the code. And that's it. So we've granted them the user to execute insert player, for example, and also insert game and insert round. Okay, next step is gonna use this connect string. The only place I'm gonna use it actually is we, can, we create the connection and we pass it the connect string. So, dim, by the way, in uh, uh, um, Visual Basic, uh, dim means declare. So declare my SQL connection, as SQL connection, it's one of these. Now SQL connection comes from system data SQL client. So this is one of those. And it has, this is kind of interesting. If you know anything about, if you've ever used Java or uh, we are in an object oriented programming language or even C++ uses this. So when we say new, this is the constructor, this is the code that creates and sets up this SQL connection, and it has to know the connect string in order to set up. After this, I don't need the connect string. I, I could have copied this connect string into these parentheses, but then it would have gotten a little bit tedious, okay? The next block is going to set up the SQL command. So there's two things I really need here. I need this SQL connection and I need this SQL command. Okay. The rest of the stuff is just kind of window dressing. So, and it's going to be setting them up. So I set up the connect string, pass it to the connection. Now the connection, now I'm really done with this connect string up here. So uh, declare my SQL connection is an SQL command. Give me a new one. Now we have to set it up, okay? The first three are its static members. By the way, it's telling, it's telling me here that there is another syntax that I could use, but I like this one for teaching it. My SQL connection dot connection. Okay, that's a part of MySQL command, MySQL command dot connection. So for this command, what is the connection? Well, it's this guy right here, the SQL connection. What's that? Oh, that's the thing we set up from the connect string. Okay, so the command gets the connection. A command type. The command type is a stored procedure. Now, everything we've done up until here will be the same in all of your procedures. So it's, we haven't done anything different that's gonna be for inserting a player, inserting a game, inserting a round, are all gonna be the same. Once you get this connect string correct, you know, after this is just, after that's just copy and paste, down to line 43. <clears throat> line 44 is gonna change because line 44 is the command text 
And line 44 is where we actually tell it to execute the, uh, the stored procedure, RPS insert player. If your, if your procedure is not named RPS underscore insert underscore player, then change it here. It's a lot easier to change it here than it is to go back into your SQL, TSQL code and change it now. You've, got it, you've already got that stuff built, use what you have, okay? If your, um, your name doesn't agree, make this name agree with what you have. Now I have to set up some of the parameters because I can't just pass it the parameters in parentheses. This is how you set up the parameter. They will change based on what your names are. For example, if your name isn't uh, at p underscore id, make that be what your name is over in the in the uh, 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 insert player. So those are the parameter names. MySQL command from here. MySQL command dot parameters dot add with value. Open parentheses. You give it the name that the parameter is going into, and now where does it come from? Where does this come from? What is that? Well, that is the player ID. If you look at the player ID, what is the player ID's name? Text underscore PID, text underscore PID dot text. The biggest mistake people make, they try to use the text field without saying dot text, because text.pid has many members, many um, methods and, and members that besides just what the text is. But we're interested in taking the text and passing it now to this uh, command RPS player. It's fairly simple. Basically, you just, if you have four of them, then you're gonna have another one there. You put the name in here and the name, this is the, the, the parameter to which it goes over in the server. And this is the name of probably a text field where it comes from. So you were just passing parameters here. <clears throat> there are three parameters. All uh, but the um, ad player has four parameters, or at least mine does. Um, so I have an output parameter, and you should have one too. The next two lines demonstrate the syntax of an output parameter. This is how you do an output parameter. It takes two lines. Okay, my SQL command dot parameters are the same, add instead of add with value, error level, and then I have to tell you what type it is. And over, over in the SQL, that is a tiny int. Okay. My SQL parameters, error level, dot direction is output. This is how you do an output parameter. So if your name doesn't match, if, you're, if the, your parameter name isn't at error LVL, then change this and make it match your parameter. Uh, so from here, from line 44 down, there will be some minor changes depending on what which one you're doing. So for for example, you can just copy this, and you could change it to to be the correct function call, the correct procedure call, and change these to be the uh, correct parameter names, and then the output parameter. All of them have an output parameter. I keep wanting to stop and ask if there's any questions. Oh, <clears throat> move on here. An SQL connection is like, uh, uh, SQL connections are expensive. Uh, when we make a connection, it's like a cursor. A cursor makes a connection. And when we have a connection open, we don't want to leave it open any more time than is absolutely necessary. Uh, so I say it's like having an open file. When you open a file in a program, the first thing you want to do with that file is get it read and get it closed. Um, they consume great quantities of memory, other resources. We open it, use it quickly, get it closed as soon as possible. 
Okay, the connection to the SQL server can fail. This is the first place that we've come to something that's outside of our control that can fail. So therefore, I'm going to put the uh, connection, making the connection into a try-catch block. Try-catch blocks in, <coughs> excuse me, in Visual ba Basic are similar to a try-catch block in TSQL. You see them there, try, catch, end, try. Um, we had begin, try, end, try, begin, begin, try, begin, catch, end, try, I think over there. They're a little bit different. This is the syntax. The one thing that we have to do here, we have to give it the type of thing we're going to catch. So which exception are we catching? So an SQL exception is defined up here in this system client stuff. Um, and so I dimension my exception as SQL exception. This is the thing I'm going to catch. So this is what is this is the thing I'm looking for an SQL exception because all of these are SQL um, commands. Well, SQL they they come from that. So I'm I'm appealing to that included file. So there's the connection. Open it. Okay, right here is where we'll probably throw the exception because if we don't have the password right or we don't have the username right or something like that, that SQL exception is going to fail. And we are down here in this uh, catch, the exception, and the output.txt gets SQL server login failed, exit the subroutine. So we give the user something else. I'll, I'll demonstrate this uh, working. I'll deliberately give it a bad password. Okay, the next one, line 65, there's the code. That's what we've been trying to get to right there. My SQL command, execute non-query. That means execute something besides a select from where. And this is a, so what are we executing? We're executing a uh, stored procedure named insert player <clears throat> with these parameters and one output parameter. We're going to be connected as public user with that password. All of this stuff that I've been going through here gets us down to here. Once I execute it, it's all happened, close it. <clears throat> if I didn't get an error there, um, then here's where I copy the output parameter from the command into a local variable. So FV error level, this is a, a variable in my form as byte. Byte is in VB is is should be make that change is tiny int in SQL. If the error level gets <coughs> uh, the return value. So remember the um, in the procedure, if something happened and the PID is null or this, we set the error level to one and exit. So this one has come back now, and this is where it goes. It ends up back here. It gets passed back to this, to this error level. Right here, I grab it and I put it into this <clears throat> variable. Now, essentially, I'm done with the SQL. Uh, I've opened the, co the uh, connection, executed my uh, command, which was to execute the procedure, executed the procedure over in the, uh, on the server, closed it, and I have grabbed the return value. Well, my procedure's pretty well done. So now, at long last, we get to worry about having good uh, human readable output. I don't, you know, humans to me, <clears throat> you just kind of, we tolerate them. But at some point we have to give good readable output. And that's the thing I love about SQL. SQL, we don't, when we're programming in SQL, we do not care what the output looks like. When we're programming in uh, TSQL, we don't care what the output looks like, just get something. Um, 
you get, you know, you just going to print a zero or a one uh, or a two or three or four or five. Um, so we, we don't really care. So what can we come back with? Well, that uh, return value, a zero on the return value is a success. One is a null PID, I believe. Two is a null name. Three is a null password. Four is a null, uh, no, four is a name in use. And a five is a, uh, five shouldn't ever happen. Because uh, the, the five is the, um, um, something happened and I don't know what it was that happened that went bad, but something went bad. And so if I ever get a five, I got a problem. Oh, uh, this point has happened, so we're gonna do it. What I'm gonna do is use an array, and this is an array of strings. So I say dim dimension or declare this array, and you're probably used to seeing those with square brackets on them, but they're not always square brackets. The name of the array is ERR messages, error messages, and it contains six of them because in Visual Basic, error, the arrays start at zero and include the upper bound. Remember in C and Java, you're used to seeing them start at zero and not include the upper bound. So when you say dimension error message is five, you really get six of them because it starts at zero. Uh, I find that confusing personally. Uh, well, no, I really don't. It's just, you just have to live with it when it, when, you, when it does happen. So error message zero says, take the te PID text. In other words, go back to the form, grab the text out of the, the PID field, and then append to it was inserted successfully. Error message is one, says insert failed because the user's ID is null. The user's name is null, the password is null, failed because it's already in use, and finally the last one, shut her down, Clancy, she's a pump in mud. Um, then I just, uh, since I've got these defined, I said I set the label, label output dot text gets, go to the error messages, grab the one that corresponds to the FV error, error level. Where did that come from? That was what my server sent back to me as the value. So I don't, I don't ever use if then else logic. I just index straight into the array, taking this error level. So if it's a three, uh, a three me or a four, let's say I get in there and I find that the, it's already in use. So when I get up here, uh, come down here, no, the length isn't, uh, no, the PID isn't null, no, the P name isn't null, no, the password is not null. And so I really should be using exists here, but I go in here and I check for a duplicate uh, PID. And if I don't get that, I don't have a duplicate PID, or I do have a duplicate PID, then I return an error level of four. Okay, so that's where I would uh, yeah, return a four. If I ever get down to here and I try to insert it and fail, then uh, I return a five. Remember, I set him to zero at the beginning. So if I get down through here and everything works just fine, he's still Z, he's zero at the end. Okay. Uh, so back to this guy. Uh, if he comes back with a four here, so when I execute the, the command, I come back with something, I get it right here into this variable. I take that variable, index into error messages, that takes me up here telling an error message four, and what is that? That string gets loaded into the label output.txt. So it's given to the user. Then what do I do? I make the text field and all of those fields be null, quote, quote. Wipe everything out of them. Um, this next one I'm gonna talk about here in just a minute. Okay, because I'm setting it to um, null. 
I'm, I'm setting the, I'm gonna, I, I'll say something to talk about in class. This stuff down here, this um, enable gets false. And then these uh, sub, uh, these other subroutines that are commented out down here are some uh, things that I was playing with to, uh, I say, other methods of validating the data exist. So I was working with some ways that we could validate the data on the form. So I can validate some of the data on the form. For example, I can look and check, I can check that a field, if a field has to have a value, it's going in as a parameter and it doesn't have a value, I want it to have a value, uh, I can check that. And I don't need to send it to the server and have the server check it. On the other hand, there's some things that I just can't check. I can't check the primary key. Uh, I don't know whether the um, name killer is in use or not. So I have to send that over to the server. So I'm going to check everything I can check on the form. And there be we can get kind of cute with doing that. So anyway, uh, we're going to do some visual basic programming. And this is your first introduction to visual basic programming. Um, let's see if I have covered everything. <clears throat> uh, to test that. Um, to test that this try catch block is working, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna make the password wrong. So this guy now has the wrong password, and so build. I, I just start without debugging, and notice it doesn't throw a build error because he never check. He doesn't check the password. The password isn't going to get checked until we actually run the code. So when I give it a player ID of something, a player name of something, and a password, so now they've got all of their fields. Um, and when I try to insert the player, now I don't have the correct password because it just changed. And so I got this message from the uh, try catch block. And I'll go. Fix my password. Uh, save. And I guess if there are any questions, you're free to send them to me on a uh, on Canvas messaging, and I'll see you on Wednesday evening. And uh, for now, I guess this is good night to all.